Hello chess lovers, Soren here and I have a very impressive attacking game for you played by Maurice Ashley against Sunil Vera Montre. The game was played in 1991 in New York. Maurice Ashley had white pieces and he started with e4. d6 by Vera Montre, d4, g6, black goes for modern defense, a hypermodern opening in which black allows white to occupy the center and then will start attacking and undermining it. Knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, c6, queen d2, b5 and f3, white is choosing a very aggressive center. Setup. Usually in typical positions, white is castling queen side and is starting an immediate pawn storm on the king side. Knight d7 was played and here we go h4. h5, black is stopping white pawns further advancement but this is creating a hole on g5 square and now Morris actually plays knight h3, the knight is galloping towards the g5 square. Knight b6, knight g5, rook b8, knight d1 d5 bishop f4 actually that rook b8 move wasn't a good idea right now white played bishop f4 and placed the bishop on a more active diagonal with the tempo rook b7 and in this case already the rook on b7 square looks misplaced e5 knight h6 bishop d3 knight f5 we see the exchange on f5 square knight e3 the light square bishop on f5 square feels fine and Morris Ashley is going to get rid of that bishop. Knight c4 was played. And in here Morris Ashley made a very important decision. Instead of capturing on c4 or moving away his queen, he went for a mind-blowing combination. You can pause the video and try to find his next moves. Ready? Well, I have already gave you a hint and probably you have already guessed that Maurice Ashley is going to sacrifice his queen. Yes, and he went for knight takes f5, allowing knight takes d2. And white is also capturing on g7 and is giving a check. King d7. Well, if king f8, then white can play knight d6 check. And then after winning black queen, in the end of the day, white is just a piece up and this is going to be winning. That's why after knight takes g7, king d7 was played. e6 check, king c8. Actually, capturing on e6 is better, though after king takes d2, still white has a very dangerous attack. But black played king c8 and now comes another powerful move, e takes f7. Well, Winning the knight on d2 is not a good idea because black can play f6, now if knight f7 then queen a5 check, if king e3 then rook g8. And after bishop h6, if we have a look at the position, these white pieces look very passive, how is white going to activate these pieces? That's why after king c8, Maurice actually captured on f7, freeing this e6 square for white knights. Knight c4, knight e6. Queen a5 check, king f2, queen b4, black is trying to create some counterplay on the queen side, b3. By the way, instead of playing queen b4, black can't capture on b2 because this is very important. The knight should cover the e5 square and not allow bishop e5. That's why we see queen b4, b3, knight d6, c3. Well, actually, Maurice Ashley could play knight e5, though black can give away the knight on f7. But he played c3, preferred another line where he's sacrificing a pawn in order to open up the c file. Queen takes c3, rook c1, queen b2 check, king f1, rook b6, black is protecting the pawn on c6 and rook b1, a very provocative move. White is allowing black to capture on a2 as well and is managing to open up the a file and after queen takes b3 the rook penetrates black's camp. Right now there is a very nasty threat. For example, if you play queen b2 then white can play rook a8 check, if rook b8 then the second rook is coming and then rook a6 with a deadly mating threat. If queen b1 check, then king e2, finally there will be no more checks, and if rook a8, then knight c5 check, already black king is entangled in a mating net and soon will get checkmated. Let's go back, that's why after rook takes a7, rook b7 was played, but now after the exchange on b7, of course black can't recapture with the king in order to protect 
the pawn on c6 because in this case the king steps into a deadly fork. That's why knight takes b7 was played, but after rook takes c6 black resigned. If king d7 then here comes the rook and we see a checkmated black king on the board. A very impressive positional queen sacrifice I think. More essentially sacrificed his queen, got two minor pieces, a very active pawn on f7 square and with his peace activity just blew apart Black's position. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you and for more games don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Good luck!